Good evening, and it's great to be with you on this Saturday evening as we say evening prayer together. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom then shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom then shall I be afraid? Though a host encamp against me, my heart shall not be afraid. And though there rise up war against me, yet will I put my trust in him. One thing I have asked of the Lord, and that alone I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the fair beauty of the Lord, and to seek his will in his temple. For in the day of trouble he shall hide me in his shelter. In the secret place of his dwelling shall he hide me and set me high upon a rock. Therefore I will offer in his dwelling an oblation with great gladness. I will sing and make music to the Lord. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. That this evening may be holy, good and peaceful, let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise, now and forever. Amen. And so this evening's psalm is Psalm 116. I love the Lord, for he has heard the voice of my supplication, because he inclined his ear to me on the day I called him. The snares of death encompassed me, the pains of hell took hold of me, by grief and sorrow was I held. Then I called upon the name of the Lord, O Lord, I beg you, deliver my soul. Gracious is the Lord, and righteous, and our God is full of compassion. The Lord watches over those who are simple, and I was brought very low, and he saved me. Turn again to your rest, O my soul, for the Lord has been gracious to you. For you have delivered my soul from death, my eyes from tears, and my feet from falling. I walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I believed that I should perish, for I was sorely troubled. And I said in my alarm that everyone was a liar. How shall I repay the Lord for all his benefits that he has given to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. For precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his faithful servants. O Lord, I am your servant, your servant, the child of your handmaid. You have freed me from my bonds. I will offer to you a sacrifice of thanksgiving and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. In the courts of the house of the Lord, in the midst of you, O Jerusalem. Alleluia. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Our first reading this evening is taken from the book of Genesis, chapter 12, beginning at verse 1. Now the Lord said to Abram, Go from your country and your kindred, and your father's house, to the land that I will show you. I will make of you a great nation, and I will bless you and make your name great, so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who curse you, and the one who curses you I will curse, and in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So Abram went as the Lord had told him, and Lot with him. Abram was seventy-five years old when he departed from Haran. Abram took his wife Sarai and his brother's son Lot, and all the possessions that they had gathered, and the persons who they had acquired in Haran, and they set forth to go to the land of Canaan. When they had come to the land of Canaan, Abram prays through the land to the place of Shechem, the oak of Morah. At that time the Canaanites were in the land. Then the Lord appeared to Abram and said, To your offspring I will give this land. So he built there an altar to the Lord who had appeared to him. From there he moved on to the hill country, from the east of Bethel and pitched his tent, with Bethel on the west and Ai on the east. 
And there he built an altar to the Lord and invoked the name of the Lord. So Abram journeyed on by stages towards the Negev. God's love was revealed among us so that we might live through Jesus. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. In this, the love of God was revealed among us, that God sent his only Son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son to be the expiation for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. For if we love one another, God abides in us, and God's love will be perfected in us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. God's love was revealed among us, so that we might live through Jesus. Our second reading is taken from the Gospel of John, chapter 5, beginning at verse 1. After this, there was a festival of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now in Jerusalem, by the Sheep Gate, there is a pool, called in Hebrew Bethesda, which has five porticos. In these lay many invalids, blind, lame, and paralyzed. One man was there who had been ill for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he had been there a long time, he said to him, Do you want to be made well? The sick man answered him, Sir, I have no one to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up. And while I am making my way, someone else steps down ahead of me. Jesus said to him, Stand up, take your mat and walk. At once the man was made well, and he took up his mat and began to walk. Now that day was a Sabbath. So the Jews said to the man who had been cured, It is the Sabbath. It is not lawful you for you to carry your mat. But he answered them, The man who made me well said to me, Take up your mat and walk. They asked him, Who is this man who said to you, Take it up and walk? Now the man who had been healed did not know who it was, for Jesus had disappeared into the crowd that was there. Later, Jesus found him in the temple and said to him, See, you have been made well. Do not sin any more, so that nothing worse happens to you. The man went away and told the Jews that it was Jesus who had made him well. Therefore, the Jews started to persecute Jesus because he was doing such things on the Sabbath. But Jesus answered them, My father is still working, and I also am working. For this reason, the Jews were seeking all the more to kill him, because he was not only breaking the Sabbath, but he also called God his own Father, thereby making himself equal to God. Your salvation is near to those who fear you, that glory may dwell in our land. Your salvation is near to those who fear you, that glory may dwell in your land. Mercy and truth have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. That the glory may dwell in our land. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Your salvation is near to those who fear you. That glory may dwell in our land. We say together the Magnificat. You have looked with favour on your lowly servant. From this day all generations will call her blessed. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Saviour, for he has looked with favour on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm, and has scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones, and lifting up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel to remember his promise of mercy, the promise made to our ancestors, 
to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. You have looked with favour on your lowly servant. From this day all generations will call her blessed. So let us pray. Father of all, we are your family, and you call each one of us to live together as brothers and sisters. Help us to overcome the barriers that so often divide us. Bless every effort that's being made to bring peace and understanding to the world, so that we may learn your ways and serve your will. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, forgive the apathy which so often hampers our witness as Christians. Our occupation with lesser things which prevents us from seeing the great vision of your kingdom upon earth. Our pride and jealousy which keep us from involvement with others in your service. Our many failures to mould our desires and plans into the shape of your loving will our prejudices which hold us back from doing what you have called us to do in the mission of your church, our unreasoned fear of change and of new patterns of ministry and worship, for our little faith, our loss of hope, our lack of love. Father, forgive what we have been, inspire what we are, and direct what we shall be. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, who in the days of your life here on earth showed compassion to the sick and afflicted and made them whole, bless those who are carrying on the work of your healing in hospitals, in nursing homes. Give them sympathy and skill and an ever-deepening understanding of their task that in your mercy and by the power of your Holy Spirit, those who suffer in body or mind may be restored to fullness of health. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And the collect for today, and the church remembers Thomas Cranmer, the Archbishop of Canterbury, and Reformation Martyr, who died this day in 1556. Father of all mercies, who through the work of your servant Thomas Cranmer renewed the worship of your church, and through his death revealed your strength in human weakness, by your grace strengthen us to worship you in spirit and in truth, and so come to the joys of your everlasting kingdom through Jesus Christ, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. So let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Just a reminder that you can join us tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock for our service of Holy Communion on this channel. God bless you.